Hi everyone, so yes, another mini PC review. It has been a while, but unfortunately no Ryzen 4000 series that I know a lot of you are screaming for. You want to see reviews of all the 4000U series or the H series ones, but unfortunately I haven't been able to get my hands on any just yet. So as a bit of a fill in here, I do have this one. Now this is from Mini's forums. It is called the U300. So it's a light, low-end spec mini PC powered by the Ryzen 3 3300U. It has four cores, maximum turbo is 3.5 gigahertz, Vega 6 graphics, which actually does pretty well, better than the Intel counterparts. And it does have some positives with this particular mini PC. Firstly, it's selling for, at the time of this video, about 300 US dollars or under. It can drive three displays at 4K 60. So if that's something you do need, then this mini PC has it. It also has dual gigabit LAN. I'll show you the rest of it and the design here with it. Powered by Windows 10 Home. And overall, my time now testing out this mini PC for light computing and even a bit of light or older uh, games, it can actually run them with a reasonable frame rate for what it is. Fan noise power consumption will be covered in this review, but just a little bit of a spoiler here, it's actually very, very good. So this is what you get within the box. We have a Visa mount, the screws. We've got some screws here for the 2.5 inch drive if you wanted to install one. It doesn't come with one, but you can add one in there, SSD or hard drive. We have an HDMI cable, DisplayPort cable, EU plug here. Our power supply has a status LED. It's a very good small size. And this one here is 60 watts, the maximum output. So looking now at the top of it right here. So this is plastic and like the other Minis 4 and Mini PC that I reviewed that you press down here, there's a click and this comes off. This is a very cool design and they're the only ones that seem to be doing this so far and you can gain access to our internals here. So we have our SATA 3 SSD here. This is 2280 in size. Now we'll test out if MVME actually works in this particular slot. And we've only got one of the RAM slots full here. So it's eight gigabytes of RAM. I will actually add a second eight to make it dual channel just to show you the maximum performance you can expect out of this particular mini PC. So where does the 2.5 inch drive go? You simply screw it onto the back. You plug it in here with this SATA connector and that's it, you're done, you put the lid back, of course. So they have used proper brands here for the RAM, you can see it is Kingston, so this one is DDR4, it's 2400, the spec that you need to get and install in this, and note this, I haven't seen them do this before, we have a heatsink right here, so this particular heatsink is over the VRMs, and that's a, a nice little added touch there, that they've added this just to keep them a little bit cooler. So looking at the back now, these are the two screw points here for that mount to Visa mount it on the back of a TV or a monitor. I actually do this myself. I mount mine to the back of monitors and it just gets it out of the way, keeps things very tidy and I use a wireless mouse and keyboard. You don't see anything. It's like, it's just the monitor there by itself running. So here we have intake vents and four rubber feet. So very important, of course, that you do not block this. If you're gonna be using this on a, in a TV cabinet, just make sure it's got a bit of ventilation as well. And you can just see inside here a large cooler. So there's the fan in there, and it's basically the same style as, say, a gaming laptop. And the hot air vents are out the back right here. So we have a Kensington lock slot, two USB 3.1 ports here on the back, our DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0A, and both of those do support, as mentioned before, 4K 60 hertz two gigabit LAN ports here, and then power in. So overall, it has an excellent build quality. Yes, there is a bit of plastic here on the top, but this is going to aid the wireless antenna and Bluetooth reception, which I'll talk about later on in this in-depth review. So if you wanna know the dimensions of this one, so it's approximately 13 centimeters by 13, and the height of it is five centimeters. So here we are in the BIOS. There's not a lot we can do here. So you can see total memory 16 gigabytes. Bear in mind, I wanna make this very clear that it is eight gigabytes it comes with, as I showed you when we took a look at the internals. Single stick of eight gigabytes DDR4, 2.4 gigahertz. I have added a second here because I get hassled if I don't, okay? If I just run it in single channel performance, I get all these AMD fanboys going crazy at me in the comments that, oh, you're trying to make the performance look worse than it really is. Why don't you put another secondary stick in? That is my reason for doing that, okay? Just to stop those silly comments and basically show you the best absolute performance. So a lot of people probably will add a second eight gigabytes. It's cheap enough to do. So power management configuration. If you do plan to run this as a server, you're gonna have it on a switch or you just simply want this option that under here, you can change it to power on from the loss of power state, which is great, that's handy or the last known state. And under AMD CBS, we do have an option for the graphics configuration. I have set this to two gigabytes dedicated 
to the radon graphics there just to make it perform at the absolute possible best. Nothing else of interest in here that we can really change. So it is a little bit restricted, this particular bias here. So on first boot, you will be greeted with our Windows setup and we have the following language packs that are already pre-installed part of this Windows 10 image. So our Windows version with this one out of the box, Windows 10 home, but it is version 1909. So yes, you need to run Windows 10 update, of course, quite a few times to get up to the latest version there. So the drive that we have on here is the Kingston that's installed, SATA 3 only. It's got about 200 gigabytes of free space on first boot. And what I have noticed that the drive, the slot itself, you can install an NVMe drive, but the BIOS simply does not detect it. So it's not supported NVMe's. Don't bother about upgrading them at all. And the Kingston speeds here. So for SATA 3, these aren't particularly great speeds. I would expect to see over 500 sequential reads and writes. And perhaps the randoms there may be a little bit higher, but they're not actually too bad for SATA 3 with this particular model here. It's not exactly going to bottleneck this particular system. So for the graphics here, it's integrated graphics. It's the Radon Vega 6. We have six cores with this one, and it does have that shared two gigabytes dedicated from the BIOS to the GPU here, which is going to aid the performance a little bit versus, say, just having one gigabyte. And the CPU itself, so this is the Vega 3 mobile, because this is really actually a mobile. It's the Yes laptop, notebook CPU, but in a mini PC here. So 3300U Ryzen 3, and it's got a maximum turbo of 3.5 gigahertz, four cores only with this one. All right, so I have run all my tests, done a few benchmarks here, and when all these benchmarks were run, they were run with the system under complete idle first before it was actually run, so nothing else was going on in the background. But I wanna bring this up here. This is probably the best area of this particular mini PC, that right now at idle, we're looking at between nine and 10 watts of power consumption at the wall, which is very good, under maximum load, so stress testing it, it's 43 watts that it's pulling, which is reasonably good here. Now, the thermals have been excellent. You can see here maximum of 70 degrees. Now the fan, it does get a little tiny bit loud and I will give you a sample of that later on in this video, but it's not actually that bad. It's quite quiet when it's idle, you can barely really hear it. It sounds almost like a spindle hard drive going. So those temperatures, very, very good. The power consumption, what it's pulling is also quite good. And then the temperatures inside the mini PC, we're looking about 70 degrees maximum on the motherboard sensor and some of the other sensors there. Maximum fan, RPM. The fans get up to almost 3000 RPM, but later on I'll give you a sample of that there. So running this particular mini PC now, it's been about two hours of stress testing it, gaming and everything. But before I did all of that and before I started checking on the temperatures, I did benchmark a few things. So Cinebench R15, so it gets a score of 462 CB, which is nothing amazing, but you gotta remember that's just a quad core here. So we can't expect miracles for this particular low-end kind of chip here. Cinebench, this is R20 now, so the CPU score, the multi-core score here is 854 CB, so this is a little bit better. And it's getting something close to, say, the Core i5, but a very old uh, third generation there, as you can see, or close to the i7, the 4850HQ. Again, very old kind of chip there. Single core score, a little disappointing and low because of that lower turbo of 3.5 gigahertz. It's to be expected there, so not exactly the strength here with these benchmark scores. And taking a look briefly here at Geekbench 4, so we're getting close to 4,000 single core score, multi-core score there of over 10,000 is actually not too bad there. That's all right. And here for single core score, multi-core for Geekbench 5, we're getting, yeah, reasonable kind of scores here, but yes, on the low side of things with this particular model here. As expected, this is not a high-end configuration. So video playback here for files, I'll just quickly show you here a couple of demo clips that it is very, very good. So let's have a look at something demanding here. So this is 4K, 140 megabits per second, HEVC codec, 10 bit. I'm just using the default player here. And it, that loads in really well. So this is excellent performance. When you skip ahead, it will take about a second or two to catch up. And there we go. Very, very smooth here. So basically everything I've been throwing at it, including this right here, which is a HDR, even though it's not actually supported, video 4K. This one also has a very high bit rate. And at 60 frames per second 4K, again, no problems. Really, really good. So this is an excellent mini PC for just this. As a media playback device, I feel it is great. Let's have a look now at how it handles spreadsheets and documents. So this is really what this kind of mini PC is ideal for. So the media playback I showed you before, video files, and then just editing documents. Just light kind of tasks, nothing too strenuous. 
I've got the doc file open at the moment, no problems. You can do all your edits and everything it seems to be in real time there. It doesn't seem to be lagging or really, really slow here. Then our spreadsheets as well. So having many, many different rows here, not really a problem for it. So we'll actually do something a little bit more strenuous and that is just to load in here a video file. So this is video editing, 4K video editing, that's, which really isn't recommended on this kind of spec. It can actually be done as I will show you right now, but um, you'll see it's not exactly quick. It is a little bit slow. So things do take a while to load in and just trying to scrub back or forward with the previews here, even at a quarter percent is a little slow. Just hit play here. You can see that that is stuttering away. So this here is a little bit too painful for my kind of use. I would not be editing video, definitely not 4K. Now, if you switched over and started to edit in just 1080p, then it would probably be okay. But again, export times are going to be slow. It's also going to be very slow just at times with that preview windows. You want to keep that on. I would say just keep it on a quarter. You don't really want to push it any more than that. So this is where it does really excel here, this particular mini PC. You think a Ryzen, okay, you think Ryzen 3, 3300U, that can't game at all. But look at this, integrated graphics, the Vega 6 is doing a very good job. This is 1080p you're looking at on the normal settings. So, I mean, I could lower this further. I could use 720p HD for a better frame rate average, but this is just to show you that the Vega 6 does so much better than the Intel integrated graphics right here. Very good performance. Just zoom out here with our camera. You can see it's still a respectable frame rate considering that, again, this is integrated graphics and not dedicated, of course, being able to do this with just even the Ryzen 3 is impressive. And I'll just get out of the car now to show you that that frame rate, it's going to be steady the whole time over 40 frames per second. So quite playable, especially if you're used to playing on consoles. Then you're getting something right here, similar that I would say to Xbox 360 performance and maybe even a tad better actually in terms of frame rate. So depending on your Linux distro that you're going to use, depending on the version of it and the date of it, this Linux Mint I need to actually update. It doesn't have currently the AX200 drivers, but I believe the newer builds do, but this one doesn't. So that's why I can't connect up to wireless. Apart from that, Linux will actually run very well on this particular mini PC. Let me just quickly recap here. So I do like this design that the fact you can click in and just remove the lid. So easy to add another eight gigabytes. Now I did test it with 16 gigabytes in total. I know probably isn't the best thing to do, but I'll let you know at the start of the video that the configuration that sells for around about 300 US dollars at the time of this video only has one stick of eight gigabytes, but that's good that they didn't use two four sticks. So it's very easy just to add that extra eight to give yourself 16, run dual channel. Now I love the fact that you can just quite easily install a 2.5 inch hard drive or an SSD. Now this is a great, I feel, mini PC for media playback. That Vega 6, it handles all of the video files out there with ease, not a problem. Even very high demanding bit rates like 140, 150, 160 megabits per second, 4K, not a problem. And even handles the 60 frames per second as well, 4K clips that I tested out, but no HDR to support with this particular chipset here. So this ha does have an excellent build quality, fan noise, big tick there. The other big tick is the thermals, excellent, really good on this. We're only getting up to about 70 degrees Celsius, very, very good there, and it's, it's a nice little package here. But then it comes to the cons, that price is a little expensive for really this kind of spec, it's a Ryzen 3. Uh, but yes, you do have the three displays that you can run and they know this and the two LAN ports giving you opening up just various different options if you wanted to use this like as a file server, uh, if you wanted to run like various different monitors, of course, three at one time, then it's able to do that and it will do that quite well actually. So gaming wise, that's where it excels to for integrated graphics I'm talking about here. So it's actually better the Vega 6 than some of the Intel, like the UHD 620, this performs much better. I mean, look at GTA 5. Now, I didn't test out any other games uh, in this video, but I did actually test out Counter-Strike, but my gameplay was that terrible. I just pulled the video from this review. It gets a very decent frame rate. You can run high settings, League of Legends, those kind of titles that aren't so heavy. You're able to play them on this particular mini PC here, which is good. So overall, for the price, a little expensive, but in, as a package, if you only need it for light computing, 
and that's all you need for your desktop needs for just a little mini PC, then this one does tick all the boxes. Now I have two other videos up here of some other recommended mini PCs from me. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully soon I will have a Ryzen 4000 series mini PC to cover here in the channel.